I hope everyone had a fun snow day. This morning we are talking about subsystem resets and the GPIO on the RP2040. Now I've already covered most of this information in another video, but uh, I kind of I kind of sped through some things that I want to take a deeper look at. So consider this video just an extended version of that, and uh, I think this would also be a good chance to establish a coding style and write some boilerplate for future videos. So as always, documentation. Uh, before I get started, I want to mention another uh, another good piece of documentation to have, which is the Raspberry Pi Pico datasheet. This is mostly just like product information, but um, I mean it does have a it has some nice visuals like the pinout right here. Uh, I like this, so yeah, uh, I'll put this in the description. But uh, let's get started with our main topic, um, the subsystem resets. So it is uh, section 2.14. So when the chip first boots up, uh, a lot of the subsystems in the peripherals that aren't necessary to uh, to boot it up are kept in like a reset state. And this is just to save energy. Uh, it's more efficient because like like you don't need an analog digital converter to fucking boot up the chip. So it'll just uh, it'll just keep that uh, that peripheral off, and then when you want to use it, you can bring it out of reset. So we'll be using three registers. Uh, actually, we only be using two today, but subsystem resets have uh, three registers. There's the reset control. Uh, this is the main one we will use to bring out the uh, to bring out a subsystem. So like if we wanted to bring out the ADC, we'll just like ADC is first bit, we'll just clear this first bit. Um, then we have this watchdog select register. Uh, we're not we're not talking about the watchdog today, but the um, this is like just if you when you want to reset a subsystem on a uh, watchdog boot and then you, we have this reset done register so after we uh, when we first uh, ask for a subsystem to come out of reset it takes time so this is just a way for like once the system is completely booted up uh, it will send us like it will set that bit high so we can like actually know when we're ready to use that subsystem so we'll be using since we're talking about the GPIO today, we'll need the fifth bit, the IO bank zero. So if we want to bring this out of reset, we'll clear it, and then we should, after it's done, the fifth bit in the uh, in this um, the reset done register, the status, we'll get this uh, bit high right here. So let's uh, let's write some code. Um, first, uh, let's get that address. So. Uh, where is it? We have our base address at 4,000 C thousand. So let's just call it um, reset read write. Uh, and then it'll be four bytes. So zero X four thousand C thousand. And then we'll also uh, want an atomic clear register. Uh, when we actually bring them out of reset, so reset clear, and then byte four zero x four thousand, and then if you remember, uh, when we use atomic clears, that's an offset of three thousand. So c thousand plus three thousand is f thousand. So that is our uh, that's how we use atomic clears for the reset, and then so let's uh. Let's just say GPIO clear, or GPIO reset clear, and let's first load that atomic clear into register zero, and then we'll um, want to move thirty-two into R one. So thirty-two is just one shifted over five bits. And we want to reset the fifth bit, and then we'll store uh, R1 into R0 at an offset of zero, and that uh, is our. Uh, that's how we tell the processor we want to bring this subsystem out of reset. Now, to make sure it's out of reset, we'll create GPIO clear loop, and then we'll load. Um, it's, we need the read or write register, so we'll load reset read or write. 
and then we'll load into R1 uh, that register at an offset of 2 so that will be our, um, our reset done register and we want to get we want to make sure the fifth bit is high so uh, actually let's uh let's put this into R2 so we uh, we already have a 32 in R1 so then let's load that reset value into R2 and then we can and uh, R2 and R1 so that so then we can say branch if it is equal back to GPIO clear because when we and two registers together so if this returns just a zero then when we and them together we'll get a zero back which means the zero flag is set and branch if equal is basically just saying branch if the zero flag is set so if we get uh, if we get a 32 back from this so and 32 is just 32 and then the zero flag won't be set so we can get out of this loop as far as the GPIO itself I believe that is uh, was it 2.8 yeah no 2.19 uh, yeah, so 2.19, the general purpose input output. So there are, what is it, 29 pins, something like that, on the uh, on the RP2040. Now, the important thing to understand about the GPIO is that you can, like, if we take a look at the pinout, uh, each pin has multiple functions. So we can just use it as a regular uh pin that we can set high and low or we can assign a function so as you can see we can assign like on just the first pin here it can be GPIO pin 0 it can be uh, SPI 0 uh, the uh, was a receive uh, thing we have the I2C 0 uh, data line or we have the UART 0 transmit line so there are a lot of functions that a single pin can have and in order to organize this uh, we have this function select system right here but for basic just um, setting pins high and low we'll be using the CO which is a uh, which stands for single cycle IO block and this is a this is a little subsystem within the actual core but um, the actual processor so we'll want function 5 so uh, the GPIO, um, it's a, it's actually pretty straightforward. We have each GPIO pin has two registers. We have a status register and a control register. Uh, there are other registers like we can have raw interrupts, uh, enable interrupts for specific processors. But um, this is beyond the scope of this video. The LED on the uh, Pico is attached to GPIO pin 25 so if we take a look at the status in the control register we don't we don't really care about the status register um, we'll all we care about is the function select since we're not using any of this fancy stuff so since we want the CO we'll assign a 5 to this uh, to this field so let's go back to our code and we'll want um, we'll want another address which is the GPIO uh, base address. So GPIO read write and then byte four and what was that at? I believe it was like forty. It was like forty thousand one. Uh, yeah, here we go. So four zero zero one four thousand, and that is the base address of our GPIO. So then to actually assign a function to the uh, 25th pin, well first so uh, let's uh, let's load that uh, that address in, and we'll have to add a uh, 128 to that address. And this is just my coding style, but um, if we actually look at the load function, uh, the arm load, the arm thumb load function, so it is load r immediate. So we'll be using this to access that register. And as you can see, we only have a 5-bit immediate. So uh, when we're loading words, so a word is 4 bytes long, and we have 5 bits, so that's up to 31. So 
32 times 4 is 128, so we're limited in a 128 byte range. So uh, the 20, the 25th pin is, uh, as you can see here, where is it? Uh, 25 control. So that is an offset of CC, which in decimal is, let me quickly calculate that, uh, 204. So a lot, so a lot more than 128. 128 is 80 in hex. So I'm going to add a 128 so we can actually access that through a load function. And then uh, just subtract 204 by 128 and then divide that by four. And that is how we're gonna load uh, load a value into that uh, that space. So, oh, what was that 19? So we're an offset of 128 plus 19 times four. And again, we're assigning a five to that since we want the CO function. So this is the code you need to, uh, I will just say enable GPIO 25. And this is our uh, GPIO 25 control. And uh, yeah, so that's all you need to set that CO function. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's just say CO func. All right, so that is what we need to actually play with the GPIO. So now that we've assigned the, uh, the 25th pin to the CO, now we have to actually use the CO. And I don't really want to get into the CO in this video, uh, but it is under the processor subsystem. So the CO is just this little subsystem that lives in between the cores, and this will this will be more important when we actually use like FIFAs and stuff in a multi-core application. But all we really ca care about is this GPIO muxing right here. So this is how, how we can directly access the GPIO pins. So the CO registers uh, at a base of D, uh, what is this? I don't know what they even called it, D with followed by seven zeros. Um, we'll, all we care about is this, uh, the GPIO out value, uh, actually GPIO out set and GPIO to clear. Um, and then this output enable right here. So uh, let's uh, let's get that base address in. We'll call it co. And I don't think we can use the uh, atomic access with the co. So let's just call it co. Uh, yeah, I I've never seen anyone use atomic access with the co. And then we'll load that co address in. So load r zero. Um, so yeah, then we'll load that CO address in uh, at D followed by seven zeros. What is that? D million. Uh, that just sounds weird. And then we'll load that into R0. So the CO. And then we want to set, uh, this is actually the, I, my, the easiest part of my opinion. So let's move, uh, one into R1, and then we shift that over 25 times since we're access accessing the 25th pin. So each bit in that uh, in these registers represent like a different uh, a different pin with the GPIO. So we'll move that over, and then <clears throat> we'll store that at an offset of. Let's see, so first we want the output enable register. So output enable set is uh, 24, which in decimal is 36, and then divide by four is nine. So we'll store this value uh, an offset of nine, and that is how we uh, enable output and uh, yeah, that's the o OE uh, set. So um, yeah, this is this is kind of just like we don't really need atomic access because the atomic functionality is already built into the CO registers, so you don't need that like uh, that four kilobyte offset. But um, yeah, well no, it was like sixteen kilobytes. It's like a crazy number. Uh, and then now we can actually drive that pin. So to actually turn this on, it's very easy. We just um, 
we have this output register here so output set we're just gonna set a uh, set that 25th bit to a 1 so we just store R1 into R0 and that output set register is at an offset of 5 so out set and that is a uh, that should be our um, our baseline code to actually get a uh, get some feedback from the chip I think it's important when working with bare metal hardware to get f just have some way of getting feedback from the chip since that's the hardest part when you're working with like like a operating system you have a uh, like standard out and all that all the uh, bells and whistles you get the uh, it's really easy to get feedback but the hardest part about bare metal programming is that lack of feedback so to connect the Pico to our uh, to our computer it's uh, all you need to do is grab your Pico press down on that boot select button uh, the big white button and then plug it in while holding down the button and then when you do that it should automatically uh, connect to your computer and we can see that with uh, LS block and this is our Pico right here in a size of 128 megabytes um, that's a completely arbitrary number I doubt you can fit that much stuff in there but uh, then we just mount that uh let's mount that to so in my home folder I have this folder called SD because I use it to mount to my uh, SD card when I'm using my Raspberry Pi uh, you can literally call it whatever this is entirely arbitrary but you mount and this is a sudo function so sudo mount so yeah once we're mounted uh, you can see right here it is mounted to the SD in my home folder and then uh, we'll want to uh, assemble and link it and all that stuff so I like to make a bash script to kind of expedite this process since we're going to be doing this a lot so let's just make a bash script so nvim make dot shell and then uh, shebang slash bin slash bash and we'll just uh, first we'll go au arm 32 m again if you're I, I taught I said this in the last video but if you're using uh, the GNU assembler just be arm none EIB AS and then um, you know your input a dot s and then output to a dot o and then you'll have to actually extract that after you link it so linking is literally the same thing but uh, LD and then to extract it you need like arm none EIB a uh, was it object copy but I don't really like dealing with L files so I just made my own linking format and then I'll output it directly to a binary so arm32 our source code and then the zinc file and then zn arm32 and then our zinc file and then directly into a binary and then we need to convert that to a uf2 so bin uf2 we're dealing with the pico's family id and we're gonna put it in the sram so a.bin and then i'll put it to a.uf2 and then sudo uh, we'll, we'll have to mount it each time so sudo mount uh, slash dev slash sda1 uh, let's see I probably should have talked all about this in my last video about the development environment but uh, yeah and then we'll copy uh, we'll sudo copy the a.uf2 to sd and then we need to unmount uh, so even though that the Pico uh, like d disconnects itself from the computer when it detects a UF2 file, uh, the as far as Linux is concerned, it's still mounted. So we'll have to unmount that uh, that uh, intermediary folder, and that sh this should be our uh, this is what we're all the commands will run every single time. So now we don't have to run through six commands. We just have one bash script. So it wouldn't be a bare metal programming video without some errors. So uh, I accidentally had a load instead of a store right here um, rookie mistake I uh, also you don't need that load uh, this load address within the loop you don't need to load it every single time so 
just pop that out. I renamed the loop to reset GPIO so we don't confuse it with uh, the atomic clear address. And uh, yeah, and also on the actual make script, um, the uh, I actually I forgot the copy right here. So you want to copy it? I had sudo a.uf2, so that's not a command. So here is the Pico in question. Uh, also, a bit of useful information. On the back, the pins are labeled. Uh, I just thought that was cool. But uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's c connect it. Just hold down that boot select, and then so all. And by the way, all this boot select does is um, so this little block right here next to the chip, this little block is the flash. So this boot select just cuts off the flash, so it just uh, it'll load directly into the SRAM. So hold that down. Plug in your uh, USB. And now uh, you can run your code. And we have life. So what was that? That was, uh, let's see how many bytes that was. 48 bytes. It takes 48 bytes to turn the LED on the Pico. So let's, um, just because I did it in the previous video, let's, uh, let's, let's have it blink. So let's create a loop. Actually, let's create a function. Let's just say LED on and we'll, create this function and then we'll, we'll want to make sure we actually have the value in um, the, I think this will be good boilerplate for future videos so we'll just have this function LED on it will load the CO in and then we'll store that value and we'll have to put this back in too and now to do the same thing but turn the LED off let's just copy this code and it's again identical except we'll store this uh, output clear is uh, right here so at an offset of six words and now we have our uh, LED off function and then let's create a little loop so loop and then we'll go We'll branch to LED on, and uh, let's let's create a delay. So let's uh, let's just call it Dell, and we'll move. Um, let's just move some random numbers. So like big number. Uh, we'll just shift one over 19 times, a comma, and then we'll have this loop. So Dell while, and then we'll subtract. So this is like a counter, so we'll have some value, and then we'll just subtract one from that. And then while that is not uh, while that is not zero, we'll uh, go back to the loop. So yeah, very simple uh, delay function. So now if we go back to our loop, uh, delay, and then we'll turn it uh, off and then delay and then we'll branch back to the beginning of the loop so we'll be in this loop of on delay off delay a quick thing to keep in mind uh, as you can see I got errors with the linker so these addresses have to be word aligned so always uh, always just keep that in mind we'll want to uh, Let's just move R0 to R0. So we just need like the extra two bytes. And now we can uh, now we can actually upload that. So now if I upload this and we have a blink. So yeah, 